I really don't understand all this fascination about making out. It's like this is mating season at Pyramid Corners High. But while everybody is chasing after everybody else, I seem to be an observer from the sidelines. All because I am not interested in a shallow surface relationship or making out for its own sake. I was in love with Riley Roberts, the senior boy next door, who cruelly rejected me in the most humiliating moment of my life. Perhaps the trouble is my approach is all wrong. Maybe I'm too emotional, too gothic, too desperately romantic. And besides, the girl the boys are most interested in is Callie Kimbrough, the ice princess, who's nothing at all like me. She plays aloof, unattainable, a woman of mystery whose feelings are forever hidden and never revealed. Well, fine. If coolness breeds success in romance, then from this moment on, I am an ice princess. Hmm. There goes Riley Roberts now. I hate you, Riley! I hate you! I hate you! You stink! <laughs> okay, from this moment on, I'm an ice princess. People say God looks out for the working man Sure hope he's looking out for me These empty pockets need a helping hand Kitchen tables full of family I think you'd be better off asking Dorothy Jane rather than me. No, I actually think I've got a better shot asking you. <laughs> Dorothy Jane, you got company. Who is it? Don't tell her. She'll only hide. It's somebody. Hey, Dorothy Jane. Oh, hello, Kirby. And what brings you here this afternoon? Hello, Dorothy Jane. There's a great new movie out. I'm not in the mood for the cinema. What? I said my fancy is not sufficiently struck. You, you can't interrupt me. I have this memorized. <laughs> Hello, Dorothy Jane. There's a great new movie out. It's a new Ernest movie. Ernest Scared Stupid. And I was wondering if you would go out with me this Friday. I'm afraid not, Kirby. Oh, well, you see, that's a bit of a problem, because I already told a lot of guys that I was going out with you this Friday. <laughs> they were misinformed. You mean you're not going to yell at me and push me down on the ground? <laughs> I don't do that anymore, Kirby. I'm different now. I'm cool and emotional and detached. Oh, good. Because I told the guys you asked me out to the movie. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. She didn't even push me down. She's detached herself from human emotion. Must say, she's a trifle cool. Cool? She's a snow cone. <laughs> and it doesn't take any great mind to know that Riley Roberts next door broke our Dorothy Jane's heart. And we are witnessing the residual effects. We are? We are. You have to talk to her, Miss Torkelson. And maybe when you do, you could sing my praises. <laughs> if you are so inclined. I can't get in the middle of a romantic entanglement. Oh, yes, you could! <laughs> I will, however, find out what's going on with my daughter. That's all I'm asking. I knew you'd come through. Maybe one day I can uh, return the favor. <laughs> You'll find the Kirby Scroggins can be a very powerful friend. <laughs> what in the world are you doing? I'm pouring myself an iced tea, Mother. And now I'm going up to my room and suppress all of my emotions. Why would you waste your time doing that? Because I am suddenly, utterly self-involved. What end? 
the end that men go nuts for it. I made a fool of myself with Riley Roberts, and I'm not putting myself in that position ever again. You did not make a fool of yourself with Riley Roberts. I told him I loved him, and I kissed him, and he told me I was just a little kid to him. Romantic rejection is no reason to change your personality. I think you're lovely just the way you are. Get real. I'm a laughing stock. <laughs> Nobody laughs at Callie Kimbrough. Callie Kimbrough's a stiff. That is not stiffness, Mother. That is a highly cultivated psychological domination. Callie is a perfectly sculpted ice princess, and she is my new role model. <laughs> you know, there are more boys in the world than the boy next door. Who cares? Care is for the caring. There are lots of boys. I shouldn't have to mention anybody in particular, like Kirby Scroggin. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to pass judgment on your pathetic obsession with the too old for you boy next door. All I'm saying is, I bet Kirby Scroggins has some wonderful qualities you don't even know about. I can't hear you. And he's a very sweet boy. Kiss of death. <laughs> With a pathetic obsession for you, and he deserves better than to have his heart broken. It's your life, Dorothy Jane, but if you're really thinking of making a personality change, what you decide right now could have a profound effect on the direction of that change. My heart was broken. I want everybody else's heart to be broken, too. Thank God I got through to you. Can I get you anything else, Callie? No, you did good. <laughs> Hi. I sit next to you in geometry. I'm the one you cheat off of. I got an A in geometry this semester, so I assume you did, too. Congratulations. Get out of here, punk. I can do that. Hey, Roberts. Scroggins. How are you doing? Good. I'm, I'm waiting for my date. I'm meeting her here at the Frost King because this is the premier hangout in this bustling metropolis. Yeah, this is the best the Pyramid Corners has to offer. Oh, yeah. This is as good as it comes. <laughs> Bet you didn't have anything like this in Cincinnati. No, I don't miss Cincinnati at all. I'm just gonna sit here and eat my hand. Roberts, can I ask you something? Yeah, it would be the highlight of my night. What is it with you and women? What do you mean? I mean, they talk to you. Come on, Kirby, I've seen girls talk to you. I can generally get them to answer a yes or no question, but how come they go for you and not me? I mean, we're both good-looking men of the world. I don't know, Kirby. It's probably because I'm a senior. I'm not a senior for three more years. I can't wait that long to be interesting for girls. I'd explode. You know, Kirby, I will tell you that sometimes girls get turned off if you seem a little, uh, desperate. I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate at all. I mean, I am desperate, but I don't show it. Hey, Dorothy Jane! You mean like that? Yeah, that kind of thing. Hello, Kirby. Hello, Riley. Hey, Dorothy Jane, do you think you can join us? Well, I suppose I have to sit somewhere. There was something I wanted to ask. We're supposed to read a Dickens novel for English Lit this semester, and you seem like the type who's read one or two. That's what you wanted to ask me about? English literature? Yeah, I've read one or two books by Dickens. And what has it gotten me? You think she reads Dickens? You think she reads Hemingway? You think she can read? I mean, now look at her. Completely surrounded by guys who hang on her every word. I mean, what can she possibly talk about? And I'm trying a new kind of conditioner. <laughs> oh, we got to try little changes in my personality to be looked at as something other than homework dependable. And sure enough, all you want to talk to me about is schoolwork. Well, I've had it. Well, just once I want to be the center of attention and get my hair smelled. Get your nose out of my head. You know, you're sending very mixed signals. Uh, Dorothy Jane, those guys over there are just interested in shallow and superficial. I mean, you don't want to be that. You want to be just who you are. Well, what are you attracted to in a woman? I'm attracted to intelligence, humor, curiosity. I mean, that's what really matters. You mean that? Yeah, of course I mean that. And all week I've been trying to change my personality. Kind of dumb, huh? Hi, Riley. Sorry I'm late. I kept putting my head through the armhole. It took forever. Sue me. Dorothy Jane? What is taking you so long? <laughs> 
I'll be right out. You know what, Mama? You were right. Changing my personality has no effect on guys. Well, I'm glad you figured that out. And it's not really what you think or feel or the way you act. That's true. It's how you look. <laughs> I'm gonna use lots of gum. Hold it right there, Dorothy Jane. I will not be referred to as Dorothy Jane anymore. That is my intellectual name. My new fun name is Dottie. You were Dottie, all right, if you think you're leaving this room with that hair. Where did you get that? This happens to be a very high-quality hair coloration system that I purchased at Pyramid Corners Pharmaceuticals that was on sale for a very reasonable amount of money due to the fact that this particular shade has been discontinued. And what is the name of this particular shade? Playful Minx. <laughs> Get rid of that right now, young lady. I am not a young lady. I am a teenage bombshell. <laughs> Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yikes. You don't seem to understand how serious I am about this, Mother. I'm just gonna have to make an adjustment. The daughter you used to have is gone. Where did she go? Obviously, she went nuts. There was no one in the world who was in the least interested in her deep thoughts, and so she vanished due to lack of interest. Her mother loved her the way she was. I think she looks pretty, like one of those girls who walk in front of the truck stop on Highway 2. Well, her mother is just going to have to get used to her new daughter, Dottie. No more poetry, no more studying all the time. Dorothy Jane is gone forever. Yeah! I find that blow drying makes my hair brittle. Nice lip gloss. Nice nails. Nice hair color, playful minx. Yep. Yours? Please. Mine is the color I was born with. Callie, can I talk to you? Who are you? Dottie. Who? Dorothy Jane Torkelson. Oh. Well, this is kind of a bad time. I got the wrestling team over there. This is a sort of intimate woman-to-woman -woman thing that only you can help me with. I'm intrigued. I know we used to be very different. I was a good student who tried as hard as I could to develop my mind, while you always seem more interested in clothes and makeup and boys. In a stunning development, I've decided you're right. That is so interesting, because a tiny little piece of me has always respected you. Really? Yeah, I mean, you seem so intellectual, which is hard work, and now you're telling me it hasn't gotten you anywhere, which is such a relief to me. Well, what you do is hard work, too. I mean, this blonde business is really tough. It is hard chewing gum and walking in these shoes at the same time. I mean, I walk in here and suddenly these guys are looking at me. And as far as I can tell, it's just because of my hair color and my outfit. It's really bizarre. I'm gonna need some help with this. You're just new at it. Boys are easy. Boys are easy? Let me demonstrate. You. I'll change. Sit down. Yes, ma'am. First, you have to develop your powers of conversation. Find a subject that interests the guy. What do you think of my sweater? All right. <laughs> and sometimes you have to draw them out with a subtle leading question. So you like me or what? I think you're the culmination of human evolution. And I would gladly spend the rest of my life being your ottoman. And one thing you must never underestimate is the power of touch. <laughs> Giggle at anything they do. <laughs> no, no, stop it! You're healing him. <laughs> and here's the most important thing I can tell you: no guy can resist a flirtatious little kiss. Oh boy! He's now ready to spend money on me. 
I'd buy you a house. Oh, no, it's Riley. Good. Now you can put everything you learned into action. But I'm not ready yet. I need some more practice. Can I practice some more? On what? He's finished. Just keep telling yourself, I'm better than everybody else. I'm the homecoming queen. It always works for me. Look, I better go. These guys are seeing too much of me. They're going to start taking me for granted. Hi, Riley. What did you do? <laughs> By whatever do you mean? Well, I mean your hair and then that outfit. Don't you like it? Well, it, I mean, it's just not you, Dorothy Jane. Daddy. What? And it is me. This is who I am now. Take me or leave me. Or take me. <laughs> well, who are you laughing at? I'm not laughing. I'm giggling. <laughs> Why? Because it's sexy. Dorothy Jane, all I want to know is what Dickens novel you recommend. Okay. First, you have to answer a question of mine. Fine. What? What do you think of my sweater? It's very Kelly Bundy. Thank you. Now, what do you think of David Copperfield? I liked it when he made the Statue of Liberty disappear on his network special. Come on, cut it out. What's the matter, Riley? Don't you like me? Hey, well, what does that have to do with anything? I'm begging you. I'm a senior. You're a freshman. I'm four years older than you. I'm 18. You're 14. They're going to come and take me away. Call me dangerous. Why are you acting so goofy? I'm not acting goofy. Well, however you're acting, it isn't like you. Being me didn't get me anywhere. I want to be like the kind of girl you go out with. I'm not very much like the girl you went out with last night. Like Daisy? Her name is Daisy? You are so much more intelligent and interesting than Daisy. I don't know why you'd ever want to be like her. Look who's talking, hypocrite. You tell me all this stuff about how you're attracted to inner depth and character, and then look who you go out with. What other conclusion do you expect me to have? All right, fine. Maybe girls like Daisy attract guys because of the way they look. And I'll admit, I was attracted, but I was also bored the whole date. We had nothing in common, we had nothing to talk about, and all she did was giggle. I guess you don't find me very attractive right now. Dorothy Jane, I thought we had an understanding. I mean, what we have going on between us is not romance. I mean, isn't it okay just to be friends? I think you're wonderful just the way you are. <laughs> Look, I, I have to go study. Dorothy Jane, please don't be upset with me because I'm four years older than you. I didn't do it. Riley? Yeah? The Tale of Two Cities. Read that one. Okay, how come? Because it's about two people in two different worlds who don't find each other until the last page. attracted attention all right in fact i'd say i made quite a spectacle myself well at least you look as if you cut quite a stylish swath i look stupid don't worry about it your real color will grow back in a year or two i'm not gonna wait that long <laughs> i didn't really dye it it's a wig no kidding I couldn't even commit to a new hair color. I'm such a pathetic wimp. It's nice to have you back, Dorothy Jane. I'll get it. Oh, hi, Callie. I just had to find out how it went, and what did you do to your hair? Well, it didn't go so well, Callie. How's that possible? I thought I instructed you perfectly. 
Well, instead of attracting Riley, I kind of annoyed him. Did you kiss him? I tried. And what happened? He called me goofy. Did you giggle? I giggled like a moron. <laughs> I'm just not very good at being you, Callie. I can't be cool and detached around Riley. Why not? I guess I care about him too much. Well, that's it. Of course it didn't work with Riley. It can't work with anybody if you let yourself become emotionally involved. What do you mean? Well, I didn't think I had to tell you after conversation and rubbing his arm a little and giving him a kiss what the last step is. What is it? You walk away. You walk away just when you've interested a guy? That's the point. That's why guys are always chasing me, because they can't catch me. But what if you want to get caught? What if you don't want to walk away? What if you want to stay? Well, that would be kind of dumb. <laughs> why? Because then you open yourself up to feeling emotions. That's the last thing you want to do. You never want to feel. <sighs> That's all I do is feel. I'm a bundle of feeling. I feel 24 hours all day and all night. Well, that's your problem. As soon as you allow yourself to feel something for somebody, you can get hurt. You're walking proof of that. But if you don't open yourself up and risk getting hurt, then you can't ever fall in love. Exactly right. You don't want to fall in love? I wouldn't let myself. I'm never going to get hurt. Then you'll never feel anything real. I thought that's what you wanted. Well, I thought it was. But I can't imagine anything worse than living a whole life without feeling anything. I mean, even though Riley doesn't love me back and, and he makes me feel upset all the time, I wouldn't give up the way I feel about him for anything. I mean, even though there's pain and tears and hopelessness because he doesn't feel the same way I feel about him, they're also the most wonderful moments of absolute joy and happiness. Because maybe someday he will. I guess you can't have absolute joy without absolute despair. I'm sorry, Callie. I've never really talked about this with anyone before. It's funny that it's you. Dorothy Jane? Yeah? How do you let yourself feel things? <laughs>